One of the things that we know within our community, the whole idea of mental health is not embraced. It's a theory of shame. Ninety-five percent of the kids that come through our program are referred to us through the juvenile justice system. They come into our program to do community service. We also offer additional services and programming. Our therapy is one of those programs. You can just express yourself, right? You can make whatever you want. The youth have been working on a project called If These Walls Could Talk. They draw their childhood home what I ask them to do is think about the story that that house is telling and see if they want to construct that story in a three-dimensional structure. Or they can create their dream home. This is my dream house. I just want it to be like one of the neighborhoods, like when you can wake up and you hear the birds chirping and stuff. This is a, a really pretty image here. It's meant to look like the perfect house, if there's lace curtains, you know, it says home sweet home here. But then on the inside, what has been expressed is alcoholic state of mind. Her childhood was ruined. It's emotional, there's a lot of conflict. She'll never forget. The kids engaged in our program are coming from single parent households. They're being raised by their grandparents. Some are in the foster care system. Some have been totally abandoned, mentally and emotionally. They're just not able to feel anymore, and they just have lost their sense of hope. I was scared when I first came here, and then people, I started meeting more people. I started caring about me. As a result of funding that we've gotten through Kubli, we're able to address that stigma. We're able to put it out on the forefront. The youth have the opportunity to display their projects at our health and wellness fair, and we call it It's Okay to Talk About It. We like to use their art as a springboard for conversation with the parents. Our counselors are there, and they each have specialties in different areas. They leave this program with some tools to be able to deal with their feelings and not necessarily in a wrong way that brought them through the door. While I was working on my house, I felt good inside. I felt like I was in the right place. It's my favorite moment in the session is when I can see that time and space has fallen away from them and they're just focused on that thing. It's a thrilling thing to see. years ago, we started working on the foundation and we held our first Beyond the Blues event and 900 people showed up. And we couldn't believe it and we thought we we're really onto something here. There is no other foundation in the state of Wisconsin that's doing what we do. Our objective would be to help a group necessarily get themselves um, started in another state. It's very important to us that we pick projects that fit our mission to raise awareness of depression, to try to eliminate stigma, to help people access resources, and then lastly, of course, suicide prevention. The Kubli Foundation wants to make sure that the organizations that are writing these grants also are measuring whether or not these interventions work. One of the greatest issues in mental health care at this time, and it's been an issue for many years, is that it's underfunded. If there wasn't funding for these organizations from foundations like the Kubli Foundation, many of these organizations would fall apart. And, and would not exist any longer. Final exams are coming up, so I'm starting to study for those. We have 52 people in school currently, and that's as a result of the program that is funded by the Kubli Foundation. The Grand Avenue Club is a place that helps Milwaukee County citizens who have experienced mental illness become part of society by providing them with an array of opportunities. Well, I can show you which class it is that I'm thinking about. You can tell me what you think about it. Michael came to us about a year ago. He was a graduate of a very good high school here in the Milwaukee area, and he was an honors graduate. And uh, he was expected to go on to college at a very prestigious university when he became ill. 
Well, I was battling many things, but one of the things I was battling was depression. It just seemed like a dark hole that at some point it just seemed like I was never going to get out of it. At first it started off with simpler tasks like some of the work that's done here at the club and then eventually progressing towards going back to school. Because I just emailed one of the professors to ask her about a class for next semester. Just to have somebody that I can turn to and say, this is going on, what should I do? It's just very helpful to have somebody that I can turn to. We're also grateful for the, to the Kubli Foundation because they have a very good understanding of what it means to be a young person with mental illness and how important it is to facilitate organizations like ours intervening in the lives of young people as soon as possible. The Great Amicum has helped instill my self-confidence and I think that's the greatest thing that it's done for me. Just by making me feel like a competent person and reminding me that I'm capable and that I can overcome these challenges. In 10 years from now, we're hoping, and I think a lot of people who work in mental health are hoping, that the shift will be that mental health is on the same level as other health issues, that mental illness is just like any other illness. I'm still overcoming the challenge, but I'm battling it and I have the support of people around me and I think that's the most important thing about it. Well, I was thinking, I can make a city out of this. My city would be perfect. But this is like really relaxing. It's like when you wake up in the morning, you feel perfect and like nothing's like holding you down. It's like that you can feel free and be yourself.